from eighth grade up until the end of freshman year, I struggled a lot with body image. I was constantly comparing myself with my peers and checking how I looked in literally every single reflecting surface I could find. My, self, my low self-esteem was affecting everything in my life, including my grades, my performance in sports, my friendships, and most importantly, my happiness. It's no secret that many of us struggle with the same problem. Society's beauty standards are constantly pushing you to strive to be someone that you aren't and to always resent the parts of you that aren't changeable. But as time went on, I realized that those who look for the greener grass on the other side will never be able to appreciate the grass underneath them the entire time. This is called self-contentment. You've all probably heard the word content being used interchangeably with the word happy. Contentment is often misused as a synonym for happiness. Let me give you an example that may help you distinguish the two. We all know of many celebrities who have been tragically lost due to suicide. All of these celebrities were extremely successful, but still ended up taking their own lives. One would find this shocking seeing as to how much each one of these people have accomplished. The reason why is because success brought them happiness, but they weren't content with their own with their overall lives. This example probably clarified the distinguishing factor between happiness and contentment. To be happy is to feel in a state of elation in one particular moment, but to be content is to feel pleased and satisfied with your life all along. The difference is that when you're content, you're also happy, but when you're happy, you aren't necessarily content. So I want you to think about this for a moment and ask yourself how it applies to you. And ask yourself, in your life, are you really content? According to the American Happiness Index, only about one out of three Americans say that they're content with their lives. What does this say about the mental health of our community? I mean, we can't really blame ourselves because lack of self-contentment is bred through every aspect of society. The media especially plays a huge role. Fixed standards are created by influencers and people will spend their whole lives trying to live up to them. The media portrays a certain image for each group of people and it perpetuates certain biases that cloud our judgment and induce implicit biases into our minds. We not only begin to develop biases about other people, but we also begin to form biases about ourselves from a really, really young age. Because when we're young, our brains are like sponges that are just constantly absorbing everything around us. So what we see and hear automatically contribute to the biases that we end up growing up with. This might be a milder example of the biases that I'm talking about, but I remember when I was seven or eight, I went to this summer camp and there was a boy there who told me his favorite color was pink. And I still remember thinking how odd this was because I didn't know any better. And somehow it was instilled into my brain that pink was a feminine color through everything that I did, like the TV shows that I watched and the toys that I played with and the environment at my school. With these biases in our minds, we automatically give into the pressures of society and don't question it once when we have to change ourselves in order to fit in. This is human nature and it's called normative social influence. This group behavior impairs one's identity and encourages them to change themselves. The reason why many of us are victims to this common psychology is because of lack of self-contentment. Self-identity is really easily lost, and we tend to seek society's approval in order to make up for that. The youth of society is especially vulnerable to this because of all the social media influence. When we see each other posting about each other's lives, we are prone to compare ourselves to them. Fessinger's social comparison theory talks about how we compare ourselves to others in order to attain an objective yardstick with which we assess and judge ourselves, ultimately resulting in us changing ourselves. This creates a sort of interminable loop in society where everyone is constantly trying to be someone that they aren't. I, for one, can think of so many situations in which I've changed myself because of someone else who was influencing me. And if you really think about how many times you've done the same thing completely unbeknownst to yourself, so as I've very clearly proven by now, we live in a world that perpetuates lack of self-contentment but you may be wondering why it really even matters. Because to be honest, a lot of you might just leave this conference and not change a single thing about your lifestyle. So I'm about to share with you the ways that this can negatively impact you when you don't apply this to your life. 
Reason number one is you won't be able to live in the moment. You can be extremely successful and still be completely unsatisfied with your life because you'll always want more and more. A lot of people are so caught up into living the media's version of happy that they forget what makes them happy and they just sort of get lost in this race of who can have the best car, who can have the best house, and for us high schoolers, who can have the best grade, who's more athletic, and we'll get into the better college. When does it ever end? You can see a woman across the hall and you think, wow, she drives a Bugatti, she's got Chanel, Gucci, Prada, you name it. She must be so happy. But just ask yourself again, is she really happy? I'm not discouraging ambitiousness, but I do still think it's important to take a moment sometimes and just pause to appreciate yourself and what you have and to look at yourself and just be proud. And for once, don't base this off of someone else. Moving on to number two, lack of self-contentment can be really toxic in relationships. Not only toxic to your significant other, be it a friend, family member, or partner, but also to yourself. Lack of self-contentment Lack of self-contentment will make you constantly crave their validation and approval. This will lead to constant anxiety and just getting let down. If you're constantly relying on someone else to be your source of happiness, they're going to burn out eventually because it's almost impossible to provide contentment for two people. Don't get me wrong, we do still need love and people who make us happy. But I'm trying to say that if you can't make yourself content, then how do you plan on spreading happiness to your loved ones? And now think about what happens when the relationship ends. Naturally, you won't be happy, none of us would, but if you've been self-content all along, you'll be able to bounce back way quicker. That's why learning to be content on your own should be your number one priority. Because yes, other people are allowed to make you feel good, but ultimately the main source of happiness has to come from within. And lastly, reason number three is that you'll succumb to group pressure way more easily. It's no secret that if you're insecure about yourself, you're likely to change yourself in order to fit in. A while back, I was a part of this friend group that didn't really share my same ideals, but I didn't wanna leave the friend group because their opinions and validations just meant way too much to me. So one day they all decided to partake in something that I wasn't really comfortable with. Now I made a smarter decision and trusted my instincts rather than going with the flow. And because of that, I'm not really part of that friend group anymore. But I could have very easily submitted to the pressure that they were putting on me because I felt threatened that if I didn't, they might not accept me to be their friend anymore. Then soon it would become a pattern and I soon might be doing all sorts of things that didn't align with my morals again and again. If you don't accept yourself from the start, you won't feel the need to submit to any type of pressure ever because you already have all the validation you need from yourself. The number of people suffering due to peer pressure is scary. According to a study done by Columbia University, a teen is up to six times more likely to drink if they have friends that drink. Another study from Temple University proved that teens are 60% more likely to get into car accidents when their friends are passengers. Another study shows that 50% of teens are pressured into some sort of sexual relationship. In total, 90% of teens report to being influenced negatively by their peers. That was a bombardment of statistics and I'm really sorry about that, but the data that I have just presented is only a terrifyingly small fraction of the peer pressure that occurs in our community. And I know that there are many reasons that people might submit to peer pressure, but lack of self-contentment is one of the root causes. And I'm also not saying that peer pressure is always negative, but a lot of the times we let ourselves get negatively pressurized because we aren't happy with ourselves. As Shannon L. Alder once said, confidence is knowing who you are and not changing in a bit because of someone else's version of reality isn't your version of reality. Now that we've talked about how lack of self-contentment can affect you individually, let's take a little broader perspective. Many mental health disorders um, stem from lack of self-contentment. A few examples of this can be seen with anorexia nervosa and, bulim and bulimia nervosa, which are both very common in teens. These are two disorders that a lot of the time stem from low self-esteem. Lack of confidence can also lead to some personality disorders. And obviously there are many factors that play into the development of mental health disorders, but lack of self-contentment plays a huge role in one of the biggest mental health disorders that we see in society today, 
adolescent depression. Another huge problem that teens face today is bullying. It's scientifically proven that those who bully do it to their own, do it due to their own low self-esteem. And those who do get bullied aren't able to stand up for themselves due to their own low self-esteem. A huge example of this bullying that occurs can be seen in the LGBT plus community. The unfortunate reality is that there are many negative stereotypes toward this community that are very damaging to people's self-esteem. 90% of LGBT plus members report to have been bullied in some form during their lifetimes. The only way that this can be overcome is to start accepting one another and building more self-contentment in our society. So with all that being said, let's finally talk about how you can, self, how you can cultivate self-contentment. There are six key elements to this. And if you live by this, I can guarantee that you will have a healthier future. Number one is getting to know yourself. Know your limitations and what you're capable of and embrace it. You are your own individual person and you have to accept that. Develop clarity in your mind and thought. This means knowing what your morals are and what's important to you as an individual person. Draw clear lines between what you think is right and remember that if you can respect your own boundaries, other people will also be able to respect your boundaries. Number two is to set small goals. This will help you focus rather than getting lost in the picture. By setting small goals, you'll be able to gain more happiness with every single thing that you achieve. And it's more rewarding when you finally achieve your big picture goal. And always remember, always remember that goals should be individual and realistic to you. Don't base them off of someone else because that will only result in dissatisfaction. Number three is to always do the best you can with what you have. Oftentimes, the resources that we have aren't really up to us. What is up to us, though, is what we use and how we use what we do have. If you train yourself to think like this, you can be happy with anything no matter what happens and no matter when it happens, because you will always be able to make do. Number four is to stop worrying about things you can't control. Instead, determine what you can control and focus on that. Recognize that sometimes all you can really do is control your attitude and effort, and that's okay. Be able to differentiate between problem solving and just ruminating. Number five is to always allow room for self-growth. There's a fine line between being overconfident and being self-content. While you do have to appreciate and accept yourself, you also have to develop a growth mindset. A little bit of self-critique can go a long ways, but remember to always keep it in moderation. So lastly, number six is with taking all these five elements, you can use them to create health affirmations. This is my main at the top. What, if you don't know what health affirmations are, they're basically just positive statements and phrases that you repeat daily in order to battle negative mindsets. It doesn't really seem like it can have a huge impact on your life, but science and MRIs have proven that by using health affirmations, people are in fact able to reach a state of self-contentment. So I want you to make a change in your life by applying these six elements today. And I can guarantee that you will number one, develop a positive growth mindset, develop a positive body image, develop more confidence, thus improving your performance, have clear judgment that won't be impaired by irrationalities, gain more satisfaction in everything you do, be perceived as charismatic and fun to be around. And lastly, you will be able to spread happiness and be a positive influence in your community. Thank you.